Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here. Another week has flown by. Thank you for joining us, everyone, for uncensored, hard-hitting truth. Excuse me. It was me, Shillelagh, Blackthorn. Thank you for joining us for another um, very informative week of uncensored, hard-hitting truth. We are coming to you from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And uh, it happens to be uh, uh, the beginning of May 2015. Okay, and uh, yes, the flowers are out and the leaves on the trees are just coming out. And uh, there's a lot of pollen on my car, on my uh, windows. You know, I had to use a windshield washer fluid to uh, clean my, my uh, front windshield. That's how much pollen is out there. And we shall see what kind of a uh, summer we will have uh, with climate change. I know the spring has been actually warm. Huh? Well, both. We've gotten both. That's the weird part. We've gotten cold nights and warm days. Yeah, 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 the days, some of the days, have already gone into summer. Very extreme. In the 80s. Very extremes in temperature going from day to night. But anyway, my name is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. I want to introduce you to uh, my co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. Get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work newslettercensor.com the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman how are you feeling this week sir? Eh, that's good enough that's a good answer eh, that's about it. let's not forget capitalism in a conch shell Concolini. Concolini. This is my smallest one. Yeah. It's probably a whelk, to be honest. Not Lawrence whelk, but you know, uh, a yeah. whelk is like a small conch. Small species of conch. Oh. So I welcome... But that's not a conch. That's only his house. So I whelk... Come. I welcome you to our show. Well conch. Well conch. Yeah, that's, that, those are the levity bells. Okay. As you can see, I have the uh, the two large gargoyles. I have a huge collection. You will get to see oh, my collection little by little. I will bring a different one in. And uh, I just want to do uh, a shout out to my near dear friend in Osaka, <laughs> Japan, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. I want to... Uh, uh, so give greetings to greetings. greetings to all of my wonderful uh, Facebook group administrators. Um, <clears throat> uh, Sash Boyle, Joe Stebbins, uh, Anthony Laura, Jean Luc Odon, uh, Justin Dana Spears. Uh, J. Cruz. Mm, I, I definitely don't want to leave anyone out. That's six. You got six groups or what? Mm, I got five groups. Five groups? Well, then there's two guys of Stebbins and Boyle in the same group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I got to, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm very, I have my work cut out for me because the groups are growing very well, rapidly mushrooms. and they're very large groups, huh? Mushrooms after a rain. Yeah, they definitely are. Okay. Um, I just don't want to leave anyone out. Uh, I, 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 I mention my new ones. Mm -hmm. I mention the ones I have mm -hmm. normally. I think I've got them. Mm. Anyway, I want to also say uh, hello, greetings to my good friend, uh, former WWE star and personal trainer extraordinaire in Boca Raton, Florida, Mr. Ken Thiessen, 
KT Training to Win, Akara USA. I send <laughs> greetings to you. And uh, who else is worthy of a greeting? Mm. It's a very big word in quotes, worthy. <coughs> I think I got it. I think I got it. Hey, you got it, man. I got it. Hey, I got it, man. You got it, you got it. What the hell's the matter with you? I don't know, but you got it. Anyway. Don't give it to anybody else. Now, uh, Dr. Bill, um, I thought it was very amusing how uh, Jeb Bush said that uh, Barack Obama is a very, he is intolerant to a re, to uh, religious faith, huh? to, to religions, to, to uh, uh, religious faith meaning their concept of Christianity. He is very intolerant. There is no one more intolerant than uh, Republicans when it comes to people that are different from themselves, especially other faiths, other lifestyles, uh, other, uh, other people. There, there's no one more intolerant. So for him to call Barack Obama intolerant of religious faith is very hypocritical. Well, when Barack Obama was first elected, they were bitching about him going to Pastor Wright's church. It's his business. Well, if he's not a good, you know, Christian per se, he wouldn't have been going to that church. Well, you see, at the a, same a time, per, a person can go to a building called it called the church. I don't want to get into that. Okay, that okay. that's not important at this time. It, if they were bitching about him going to that church at that particular time, you've got to remember, they were also accusing him of being a Muslim. And, and not being American. So, well, being born in Kenya. You got no birth certificate, Mr. Trumper said. Well, of course they don't want you to pick on poor little uh, Pinocchio nose, penguin faced uh, Ted Did, Cruz, who was, who was born in Canada, right? Yeah, well, well, we'll see how that works out, because I was just looking in Time Magazine today, and then about uh, the campaign money that's going to flow into the, these elections and everything like that, and they were saying, there won't be any prosecutions. There won't be any prosecutions for anything wrong done. They, they all wear clothes. They just, they, just, they, they just don't have the heart. To they they all have clothing of Teflon. And of course, the, um, the Democrats, I don't want to use the word progressive liberal because very few of them are. Democrats have no spine. And, no, like and, Mr. And Gore. No, and no, they don't taste blood uh, uh, enough to go after Republicans. Mr. Gore just gave up, didn't he? Yeah, he, he actually won Correct. the election. In, in, in Technically, in reality, he won, but they screwed him over and he conceded. That's true. He, without a fight. And the, without we, a recall. We must never forget. The Supreme Court of the United States selected George W. Bush to be president. Is this the same Supreme Court? He didn't win. He was selected. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of the Supreme Court, I hear they got they have uh, the Democrats have some pretty heavy duty dirt on uh, Antonin Scalia and, and Mr. Uh, Thomas. And, and Thomas and um, well, they should have some dirt Clarence on Mr. Thomas. Thomas because his wife has been. Uh, He's never recused himself for anything that his wife has been involved in. Yeah, well, we all know and Anthony, she works is, for. Anthony Scalia is a bloated piece of shit. Oh, he thinks he knows the Constitution. Yeah, what about Republicans that are insisting that God wrote the Constitution? Ah! Isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> yeah. God, the, the Founding Fathers specifically stated that they wanted to keep religion separate from politics when they formed this nation. It's there. It, th this is not a Christian nation, you idiot teabaggers out there. It is not. The United States, and I repeat, is not a Christian nation. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be in any religion 
religious nation. Um, Jeb Bush, of course, uh, one of the funniest news is, news I've heard all week. Jeb Bush uh, appointed his brother uh, G. W. Bush uh, as a foreign advisor in his foreign campaign. Foreign policy advisor. Foreign policy <laughs> advisor. <laughs> Along with seventeen neocons, a Paul Wolfowitz amongst them, and I'm sure Mr. Uh, 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 Ironheart is among them, also. Um, uh, Chris Christie embraces climate ch uh, change and and the um, um, global warming and all that jazz you know Chris Christie all of a sudden is sounding moderate sometimes progressive why because it's 2016 and he's running for president and he's trying to appeal to to the average mainstream schmuck because he's probably lost the uh, conservative base he only has five percent you told me yeah yeah. And the leader had something like 15 percent. You know, so, um, um, amongst them. That's true. That is very true. Um, he's losing ground there. Yeah. You know, but of course, the other crap is still going on, like, uh, 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 what was it? The, the FDA, of course, the FDA is always siding with big pharma against anything that cuts into their pharma. profits. They get money from big pharma. Yeah, oh, the FDA was... percent uh, of their budget, I believe. The FDA wants to take this health uh, uh, energy bar or meal replacement bar off the market by... by they're, they're coming down on them for using the word healthy and antioxidant rich. Oh, yes, they do that. Hey, it's Anything. not even. Hey, but it's not a medical claim. But you see, see what they're doing now. They are they are trying to get more control as the years go by to get you to make no claims if you're making a health product. So the FDA supposedly that allows uh, that tests drugs before they go to market. They don't test them. Because if they cared so much for your well-being, would they want to take a, a energy bar off the market for saying that it's healthy for you and it's full of antioxidants? Would they want to take that bar off the market? Yes, they would. Because any medical claim by any kind of food or supplement, etc., they claim is making Listen. the medical claim and therefore they are now in charge. Okay? Yeah. I'm read, coming down on you. Read, read my lips and shillelagh. Read my lips. No new taxes. F the FDA and the USDA do not have your best interest. They are sold out. They have sold out to Monsanto and Big Pharma. Period. Get that through your thick skulls, teabaggers. Well, not just teabaggers. Mainstream. Mainstream has been brainwashed. That's correct. Just like mainstream is brainwashed to believe that the the stupid uh, electoral college system of 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 electing a president is uh, the best way, and and if they listen to certain big shots, they'll they'll even believe that the flat tax is the best way to go, and uh, and the they demonize the IRS, of course. And, and, and the mainstream will believe any bullshit they hear on mainstream media because they feel if it wasn't true... Official it, dumb. It, it we would, worship official dumb. It wouldn't be on mainstream TV or cable That's if it correct. wasn't true. Whoa, or, oh, it's like saying, whoa, Donald Trump, he must have done a lot of things right to be that wealthy. Well, Bill see. Gates, Bill... How many times was he in bankruptcy? People, you know? people that believe that if somebody is loaded with loot, they must have done a lot of things right. Filthy they, lucre. The Bible calls it filthy lucre. Uh, ill-gotten. That's Ill, correct. It's ill-gotten gains. That's correct. He who uh, makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. That's correct. And what's that other one about um, oppressing the poor? Yeah, he who um, he who gives to the rich 
and he who oppresses the poor to be rich um, and he gives to the rich get, and gives to the rich shall surely come to want. shall surely come to want. Yeah. it's not that's not verbatim but that's no. the gist of it but yeah. there's a lot of Bible verses uh, demonizing the rich and rightfully so because Ca the rich have their consolation you need give them nothing yeah capitalism in a conch shell notice that no one that is wealthy that is on top that is in power no none of these people are held accountable for what they do for their actions they are getting away with murder but if the little guy dare does anything they will lock Three you strikes up. and he's out they'll lock you up throw away the key and they will get free slave labor from you in a privatized prison Ah, the good old days of the pre-industrial revolution when the poor way wor worker debtors got prisons shit. Got Ch shit. child labor debtors prisons. child labor women labor yeah the women the women that were instrumental in in suffrage right the, uh, well, the woman's right another, to vote yeah that's another item they sacrificed a lot for to give you women out there the right to vote so I suggest you think about those ladies and you vote at every election and you know what even if you're poor more so if you're poor or a minority you should be voting at every election it's your duty as an American but think of it in your best interest for your very survival yeah but unfortunately you should be voting your choices if you're poor, you're not going to have people who are in your interest except, running in the first place. Except for a Bernie Sanders. Go Bernie Sanders! I dedicate, you know what, I'm going to dedicate this show again to Bernie Sanders. Senator Bernie Sanders is running. Okay, I salute you. Um, I want to go back to you say your electoral college. Electoral there. college. The electoral college, of course, is a constitutional thingy. Now, all the complaints we've heard over the years and years and years against the electoral college, no one, no one has ever put together the amendment to repeal it. Well, all oh, yak, yak, yak. That's it. Period. Um. It is whoever uh, came up with the idea that the the people, we the people, are not qualified to elect the right president or the right congressman or the right senator. Well, let's just say president, president. All right. That kind of like takes some power away from we the people, doesn't it? To say that we are not, we are not qualified. That's exactly correct, because the people who wrote the Constitution as you remember were slave owners they did not give women the vote no they were afraid they wanted the people to be the, the sovereign and in charge but they are afraid to ever give them the power and that's why they put the electoral college in there yeah when they say when pure they, democracy yeah people fear it because the people on the bottom are going to be in control. And the bourgeoisie and the, 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 the oligarchs, they don't like that. They don't like that. No, well, when they said all men are created equal, what they really meant was all white rich men. Yes, they wanted, at first it was like men of property. Yeah. Men who owned property. You had to be a man, you had to be white. And uh, if you were a poor, uh, if you didn't have two nickels to rub together, yeah. or a pot to piss in, you really, they, they didn't really pay attention to you. You were invisible. That's Just like the homeless is invisible today. You a, know? a dispensable cog in the wheel of industry, that's all. Just like the military personnel are dispensable you don't cogs like the, in war profiteering. If you don't like the job, just move on and get another one. That's what Republicans always say. Yeah. That's their defense. You know, how, you know how, how many years that's been going on? You can go back to France, you can go back to the UK, 
etc. in the pre-industrial that, revolution. They def- said the same damn that's thing. That's their defense against regulation. No, that is their claim of freedom. You have freedom. No, you don't if you're starving. But that counters that counters the need for regulations, for regulating oh. the rich, for regulating corporations. Oh. When you say if you don't like it, let the buyer beware, move on. Uh, 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 move on. You don't He's like it, quit. Owners- a Republican will say, well, if you don't like the job, yeah. no matter how, how much of a louse your employer is, if you don't like the job, quit. 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 Some the jerk onus is always put on the individual because he is easier to brutalize. That's why they hated unions. They, because it brought the individuals together but, to fight. But by saying but by saying if you don't like it quit, if you don't like it move out, if you don't like it do this, do that, that is a a also a way of not holding anyone accountable that's exactly. on top. Exactly. And it is a pretense that you have freedom right. of choice. Yeah sure. Okay? That brings me to my siphon. There is no trickle-down economics. It is siphoned up to the elitist economics, the devil's economics. You see this? It's siphoned up. It's siphoned up. Now, there was a little illustration last night of a wine bottle that is very much longer and larger than the, the one stacked at the bottom. You know, it was a pyramid stack. And, and it illustrated trickle-down economics. Now the wine bottle was huge, and on the top, on the top, and you know it was filled up with a lot of wine, but there was no trickling. And, and <laughs> it's bullshit. There is no trickle down. All right, siphon up. You got it. <laughs> I just want to get my. I didn't si- see that. Yeah, it's wow. Well, it's see that last night. you might have logged off. No, I went till the end. Okay. I mean, uh, till things from uh, yesterday. I saw you in the in the. the before, I saw you in the chat window. Uh, it said. I'm web. not on chat. I'm disconnected from chat. No, no, no. I saw you on the on the Facebook chat window on the right hand side, where all the uh, fr- the friends list. You were there, listed under web that you were online. That you oh, were. Okay, that yeah, I was, but uh, yeah. I'm always disconnected from the because yeah. I can't uh, I can't put up with people bothering me there. Yeah. You know? Well, I use uh, like Skype. I only use if I if I have a reason to like to communicate with someone or to have a guest on my sh- on my live show through yeah. live stream. Then I go there, but you know otherwise. Um, um, I'll tell you a, a personal story off the air. Ooh. I'll tell you a personal story. Um, that's about it, really. I mean, uh, I'm still waiting for, for poor Harold to let me know ah. if they straightened out his situations with the uh, Department of... Uh, uh, is it, what the hell they call themselves now? Social Services? Social Human Services? services. Yes. Uh, um, anyway, Social services to help the po folk. Mm-hmm. He had some problems. I mentioned it last week. All right, let us sink our teeth a little <laughs> early into these readings, and I, I cover my bases. I don't have any any product to bash for Chisler's Hall of Shame. I mean, I will say that I am very saddened to see articles, read articles, and see photos of animal abuse in yeah. all ways. And I, 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 I want to say shame, shame, shame on you, China, for doing what you're doing, for boiling dogs and cats alive to prepare them for food. Uh, and we're sending our chickens over there. And you're going to trust... They're going to process them and you, send them you're back. You're going to trust chickens processed in mainly in China to come yes, back... that's what we're doing. ...to come back to the United States? That's correct. Hey, trade deals. Aren't they great? Well, even Donald Trump doesn't like the... Uh, Fast the, track. The, 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 fa- the, the, the PCP. Fast track. Yeah. So that you people don't know nothing about it until it's over with. Like NAFTA. Got even a stink, even a stink pot like Trump doesn't like it, so it can't be that good. Ain't good at all. Uh, 
Well, the corporations over the years in these treaty deals have made it so that they are in charge. If you deny them something, say, say they want to put something in a product or something, you say, no, 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 that's, uh, we don't like that, that's poison. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, we're going to go to the, uh, you know, the uh, arbiters in the, uh, uh, wherever they're going to have them, they're going to have arbiters. You mean like the truth in labeling? With no, our no, foods. No, 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 my friend, my friend. No. Let me finito. What happens at these arbiters, the arbiters are ex-lawyers for corporations, etc. You go there, you compl they complain, they win. They win over a government. They have more power than a government. Well, they're they allowed, they're are allowed the to, sovereign. They're allowed to have this power. Well, it's in the TPP. Oh, it's oh, that, okay. That's horrible. Well, of course it's horrible. It takes away a country's sovereignty. But that's what they want to do. Because they want the corporations to be in power. Which not is, a government. Which is fascism. Well, not a government. Yes, it's fascism. You know, when the court, well, these goofball, moron, um, right wingers, tea baggers out there, they seem to throw communism, socialism, fascism. They just, they just blurt out words, word salads, when when they are trying to attack the, a democrat or a liberal. You know, well, because they don't understand communism, socialism. They understand totalitarianism. They don't have the education to understand the definitions Correct. of the political definitions. Correct. They don't. No. And they only understand, of course, uh, the Soviet Union with Stalin and Lenin, these dictators. So, of course, oh, well, communism is like that. No, no, it's not. All of the modern day communist governments. Um, are dictators. After Marx are nothing but military totalitarian dictatorships. dictatorships. That's correct. All of them. They, I mean, how much? What country really followed Karl Marx's None. writings? None. No, they corrupted it. That's what I just it, said. Right? They corrupted it. Okay. okay. Governor Christie said on Friday that he would reauthorize the Patriot Act. And that he believes the National Securities Agency's collection of okay. phone records, okay. which was ruled excessive by a federal court on Thursday, should continue. Mm -hmm. Christie, who is considering a presidential run, spent Friday morning in Amherst, New Hampshire. Isn't that where they... Um no, yes. they kick off in Des Moines, Iowa, right? Well, where Iowa, is New Hampshire, then New and Hampshire. South Carolina. That's the first three. Courting potential voters at Joey's Diner. Christie on Friday came out in support of the NSA program after telling a reporter on Thursday who asked about the federal appeals court ruling that he didn't have a comment because he had not yet read the decision. I believe there can be appropriate oversight by Congress and we have people in the Justice Department who can oversee whether the law is being followed or whether the law is being violated, he said. That's why, uh, that's why Mr. Snowden had to uh, blow the whistle, right? Because yeah. we have people in the Congress and we have people in the uh, 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 Justice Department that will oversee. Yeah. Right. Edward Snowden simply did his job and, and defended the Constitution and did his job and, you know. Did you should you should rat out uh, uh, wrongdoers. It's, it's, like a, it's like a cop getting in trouble for ratting out a, a, a corrupt cop doing something bad. Yeah, well, Republicans don't like that amongst themselves. Well, of course they don't like it, because they they, like they, they're, they're the ultimate in, in selfishness. And, and, you know, it's like, that's the best way I could sum it up. 
I'm not one of these folks who believe that we should bring our guard down, especially during this really dangerous time. Mm -hmm. I think it can be done in a way that's not only constitutional, but protects national security. Three years ago, when Christie learned the New York Police Department had been conducting secret surveillance of Muslim communities throughout New Jersey, including in Patterson, he came strongly out against the practice. But Christie's issue wasn't with the surveillance. It was with the NYPD's failure to tell New Jersey officials they were in the state. Something the governor said could have endangered the lives of law enforcement. How do they know? The Attorney General's office hasn't been surveilling those people for two years, he said, in a news conference in Trenton in 2012. This is when you have law enforcement officers hurt or killed because they are surveilling the same people and they don't know those guys are law enforcement and vice versa and people wind up shooting each other. On Thursday, the 2nd, U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New York shot down much of the federal government's arguments for expanding its phone surveillance program after the 911 attack. The three-judge panel did not rule whether the program violates constitutional privacy rights, but found the language in the Patriot Act, which former President George W. Bush and President Obama used to justify the data gathering, was not meant to allow the collection of nearly all calls in the country. That section Patriot Act is to expire June the 1st, and there's a battle in Congress over whether the program should continue. I think that Congress, without delay, should extend the program, said Christie. Well, you can't expect anything good coming out of the mouth of a conservative corporatist. But she was... Or corporatist. I'm going to use the word corporatist. The, for, the, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. I thought they were all for the Constitution. So Wasn't it written thought, by God? That's what I thought. Yeah. You know, I remember when I was a kid there, Reagan used to rant on and on about being against monopolies. And that's what the Republicans love. You know, yes, of, of course, if, if, the, if, the, if the big corporations give them enough money, they'll love anything well, bingo. the corporation wants. <laughs> That's what goes on. Jeez. You know, I mean... That's uh, not hard to detect. That's like the, the, the madame at a massage parlor, Chinese madame, saying, um, you know, uh, one guy gives her money and oh you very uh, you very uh, handsome the other guy has no money oh you you ugly you're not so handsome it's the same thing <laughs> it's the same thing with uh, you know, get my politics sister. you know get my sister no ticky no washi <laughs> you know no ticky no washi and you know and that's how these politicians are they're like uh, they're like uh, uh, a they're car whores. They're carnival hucksters. Say they're, what it is. They're whores, snake oil Thank salesmen. You. No, they're whore. They're whores with a with a suit and tie. That's correct. You know, and uh, whoever's the highest bidder, they they hold out for the highest bidder, and wh whatever the highest bidder says is what, like a chameleon, it's what they become. You know, oh, you wanna. You want the United States to be a, an oligarchy and a, and a fascist, uh, you, a corporate control country? Oh, you give me how many billion? Oh, sure, take it. Take the United States. Uh, you know, that's how they are. That's, it's, 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 
Capitalism, the devil's economics. The Constitution is just a goddamn piece of paper. G.W. Bush said. Okay. The new foreign advisor for Jebby. Little Jebby Bush. Defense Secretary Ash Carter is flatly denying the frenzied internet speculation that a United States military exercise in Texas is part of a hostile takeover. So you you think Did Mr. Cruz say that? You think Ash Carter Obama's invading Texas? Do you think Ash Carter is getting it in the ash? Uh, oh yeah, the uh, the Alamo part two. Stay tuned. It will come. Asked during a news conference about the Jade Helm 15 exercise and whether the Pentagon was planning to overtake Texas, <laughs> Carter simply said no. <laughs> as the packed room laughed. Yeah, they, they, they. <laughs> Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott. Hey, Abbott. Has asked his Abbott. state guard to monitor the training exercise. Earlier this week, more than 200 people packed a meeting in rural Bastrop County asking whether the government was planning to confiscate guns or implement martial law. I say this, son. I say this, son. Remember the Alamo, son. The three-month exercise begins in July and mainly involves about 1,200 Army Special Operations soldiers and other U.S. troops honing their combat skills. The military routinely conducts exercises all over the world. Well, <laughs> there's not much you could say except making certain sound effects like this. <laughs> Get out the big butterfly nets, folks. Get straight those, jackets. Get the straight jackets ready. You know, and including if <coughs> Michelle Bachman and um, 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 Sarah Palin throw their hats in the race and join the big double-decker Republican clown bus. You'll yeah, it had, been enlarged, it, it had to be enlarged from a car to a bus. Now it's double decker. Because I think there's twenty one in the yeah. running. But I think Chris Christie has to stay at the bottom. They won't let him go. He's there now. They won't let him go in the upper deck. <laughs> he will crash right through uh Yeah, she's uh, uh uh what did the uh Sarah Palin call him? Uh, Bernice Anders. Instead of Bernie Sanders. She drinks a month after a North Georgia county caught hell for raising the Confederate battle flag over its courthouse, another flag controversy has engulfed a small central Georgia town. This time, it has nothing to do with the Civil War. Where, where's Basil Marceau when you need him? <laughs> a traditional Christian flag flying over Cochrane will come down on Friday after city officials bowed to threats of legal action. Uh -huh. The controversy began early last month when the city council voted against the advice of its attorney to fly the flag at City Hall to help promote a local Bible Reading Marathon sponsored by the International Bible Reading Association. Well, hopefully they're reading it and understanding it accurately. They cannot. Because they're, they're evangelical right wing? No. And because zealots? It, the Bible is a coded book. Right. 
only certain people can understand it. The sure is in a, the past, a lot of so-called saved Christians running out there. And yes, they believe they understand it. They do not. Dancing in the streets. Yeah. I mean, uh, what is it, Palin and Michelle? They're calling the, they're calling the the, the, the tribulation here already, et cetera, et cetera. Well, There's a chronology that goes yeah, through the Bible yeah. that, if you know and understand it, you'll know that the tribulation is not here yet. Because the certain certain signs have not taken place Correct. yet. Correct. In the timeline. And if you wish to understand certain things when uh, the Bible is talking about nations and this, that, and the other thing, you have to know where the nations of ancient Israel are today. Are there Jews in the world today? Yeah. Okay, Jews come from the tribe of Judah. They are in the world today. Yeah. So where's the 11 other tribes? Scattered about. Different people, different cultures, right? Correct. Or individuals inside other nations. Right. This is if you are following the the Christian Bible and not ancient aliens. Uh, that's another talk show. Well, we yeah, but that's not that's not the issue. Okay, I was stick no to the issue, issue between this or that. I'm only talking about if you wish to understand something, you have to understand premises. You have to understand some things came with revelation. You know, they were revealed to people in the past. And when, then we build upon their revelation. We don't get that in revelation. We don't know that. We know that because they it was revealed to them. And then you check the Bible and you say, oh my yeah. gosh, yes. Though, though that was back in the day when gods and angels communicated directly, you know, God and angels and Jesus communicated directly with humans. Well, God only time. spoke basically to through the prophets of old. Yeah, that's what I meant. One yeah. person. Right. You know, they and then go through a group. Right. You know? And then John a uh, John uh, uh, of Patmos who wrote Revelation the div divine uh, inspiration the d divine communication with John of Patmos was probably one of the last times that God or Jesus directly no He's communicated directly after that? Of course, there were 18 things that were no longer in the Bible that had to be restored. Yeah, no, I mean direct. Like talking, conversation-wise, that's what I meant. Well, John was taken up in spirit. He was, he was, it was a vision. Okay. He had a vision of heaven. He didn't go up there. Like Daniel's vision? Yeah, but if did, he went up there, he wouldn't have no did, oxygen. Did Jesus uh, visit Pathmos to, to no. tell him things? I just said he was taken up in vision. Oh, okay. Like, da was, like he, Daniel's visions. If he was taken up into heaven, he would die from no oxygen. So he wasn't there. No, he was he's human. Yeah, sure. Yeah. He was taken up in vision. He was showed these visions. Jesus did that when he took the three, uh, John and uh, Peter and the other uh, disciple, up on a mountain and he showed them a vision of the future. Okay, these, these, they, they weren't there. They didn't go there. Right, 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 right. They were taken in the spirit, what they say, in vision. And of course, John was given these visions of what is to occur. Mm -hmm. Okay. While city officials have said local residents supported the decision, national groups, including Americans United for Separation of Church and State, said they have received several complaints that flying a flag with a Latin cross violates the Constitution. You know what? You shouldn't... Being that America, the melting pot, the multiculturalism of America is made up of all kinds, and they all pay taxes except for the rich. But you know, the little guy. So why they, they all pay that? Why 
what right does anybody have to promote one religion over others? See the, and then Power. It, then it takes away your fr freedom for, yeah, but it's their version of Christianity. If you happen to want to be a Christian, or you happen to be a Christian, let's say you were a Christian, and you weren't a, a, a Hindu, or a Muslim, or a Buddhist, let's just say, you were a Christian. Um, you know, I mean, why should you embrace their crazy cult of Christianity? Well, you know, to be a Christian, it's full of lies. all kinds of Christian sects. I think there's like over 3,000 or something. This is why Jesse... There's a Methodist, there's an Evangelical, there's a Baptist. There's a, I mean, which Christianity are you talking about? Now do you know what... What is their base? Now you know why Jesse Ventura is so much against organized religion? The crock of shit Well, it, of course it, it is. If you are going to adhere and uh, obey a certain religion, you better prove it. Prove all things. Hold Prove fast things. that yeah. which is good. Yeah. It's in Thessalonians. 5 Thessalonians 21. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, don't, you know, don't, don't make light of me when I joke around. It's just my personality you know, by, by doing this. I mean, it's really there. A little change of pace. Tomato paste. Toothpaste. I am 64 years old. My wife is 62. Yeah, this is the story. We are empty nesters. The kids have, fl have flown, flew to coop. Flown to coop. Flown to coop. Well, they're roles. I, I would imagine that. My wife and I are intimate most often on Saturday. Oh, God. Now I got to think about mornings, old people may having sex. Often Wednesday morning when I have a day off. And occasionally at other times as well. I have ED issues. Oh. Okay. Which I deal with successfully. Successfully? Viagra. Uh, big Pharma. He's doing it the Big Pharma way. He should try arginine. Amino acid arginine powder. Uh, what a... My wife retired last year. She has a habit of always setting up sexual expectations of me. Really? At that Duh. age? They should be playing bingo. The weekend is coming. Yay, Wednesday morning, you're off work. Ha ah, ha, we get to stay in bed on Friday. Oh God, I don't want to think about this. Two prunes in bed doing the Kama Sutra. I usually tell her to just live in the moment and to stop looking forward. Spontaneity. That's it. Spontaneity. Spontaneity is the way to go. Live in the moment. She gets plenty of hugs and kisses and grabs throughout the week. Grabs? Yeah. Stop short. Grab ass, man. Stop short like Frank Costanza. Hey, Kramer stole my move. Stop short. Remember that? Oh no, that's in that's the that's into the intimacy already. This is this is just grab ass. Well, grab ass As usually you leads by, you to. You grab her, right? Grab her. Well, no. my my grandfather used to say, kissing leads to uh, hugging, and hugging leads to grinding, and grinding leads to intercourse. Del Shannon said last night that True. there aren't enough hugs in the world. You know what I don't like? I don't like those uh, phony baloney show-off platonic hugs where somebody, somebody is so afraid, you know, to give you the wrong idea that they lean forwards. They won't hug you, you know, torso to torso. She believes she has the greatest life and is happy and fulfilled. I am happy and content as well, but I am more centered seemingly without the extreme highs and lows that she experiences. She does this forward-looking, exciting thing, not just with sex, but with nights out, vacations, parties, etc. Last night, she did this morning sex expectation thing. I didn't react with similar glee, so she got mad. And I launched into an honest conversation asking her to please stop 
setting up these expectations. Putting because, pressure on the old guy. Because if we don't follow through, he's lose, yeah. which is rare. Which is rare. You're going to stress him out and, and he's not going to perform. He's going to lose his glee. He ain't going to have no glee. I don't want to disappoint her. I got Typically, no she glee. overreacted. Okay, I'll never say those things again. Which to me was a very unfair response. After several failed attempts to get her to understand my point, I told her she was nuts. Is my reaction normal? I call people nuts all the time. That's normal to me. Amy Dickinson. I use other words too. But is. Yeah. First of all, how awesome are you two? <laughs> Secondly, there's this. If you ask your wife not to speak to you in a certain way, and she responds with, Okay, I'll never say those things again. Don't double down and question her tone. And do not tell her she's nuts. Hey, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck. You and your wife are temperamentally... Yeah, but you got to live with her. Huh? Huh? That's what, um... Huh? That's what my Uncle Artie used to say. i got to listen to her. i got to live with her. It's different when you're on the outside giving advice. You and your wife are temperamentally quite different. She is effusive. You are more reticent. Mainly, I assume this difference inspires some wonderful chemistry between you. In this regard, however, you are taking her excitement and encouragement as pressure to perform. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, he, uh, he is creating the anxiety within him and putting pressure on himself. Given your ED issues, I can imagine this is stressful. She can't be overwhelming the old geezer. Explain your situation to your wife this way. Her advanced excitement creates sex expectations. I like that. And stress. Stress. Making it tougher to make the magic happen. Well, stress will will destroy the event from happening. Stress is a is very detrimental. If she can dial it down, it will be easier for you to dial it up. She's got to kick it down a few notches, a few crotches. <coughs> okay, that's it. Time for break. Time for a break. It yeah. is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman and myself, actually. Yeah, I'm I didn't hungry. have time to eat, eat before <coughs> for our gastronomic delight known as lunch, and we will be joined by the... Um, the uh, uh, proven, authentic, accurate Bible verses of uh, how to defeat a conservative, how to defeat a conservative, uh, proofs, all, all you have to do is hit the pause button and read and learn, followed by our voice over artists, the one and only William Hamilton Morrow III with his words of wisdom and promo. We will see you after that, for the balance of our weekly show. Isn't it so, Dr. Bill? Yeah, it's a really big shoot. Yeah.
Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay. We are back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III, for doing promo for us. Uh... People don't realize, Dr. Bill, that um, only 10% in the history of the United States since 1776, only 10% of the population ever, ever uh, rose into a higher right. class. Their standard of living rose from And yet the Republicans say we are an upwardly mobile country. No, no. Well, statistic statistically, this is proof that the American dream and capitalism is only for the rich. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we will continue with our readings of the balance of the show, Uncensored, Hard-Hitting Truth. Coming to you from the Newsletter Censored uh, Research Center in Northeast New Jersey. And I would like to say hello and greetings to Mr. Christian Dars, the president and master craftsman of RevolutionClubs.net out of uh, the Houston area, I believe, in Texas, my friend, Mr. Christian Dars. He has a brand new line of Indian and Persian clubs coming out. So periodically check his website if you happen to be into alternative fitness like myself and my friends Christian Dars all right astronomers have discovered a baby blue galaxy that is farther away in distance and time than any galaxy ever seen it's among the universe's first generation of galaxies. From 13.1 billion years ago, Yale and, uh, and University of California Santa Cruz scientists used three different telescopes to spot and then calculate the age of the blurring infant galaxy by measuring how the light has shifted they determined the galaxy called EGS ZS8-1 is from about 670 million years after the Big Bang because when astronomers look farther away from the earth they are looking back further in time. Mm -hmm. This is both the most distant galaxy and the furthest back in time. It's 13.1 billion light years away. Sure. Many of the stars you see in the sky with the naked eye are, some of them are most likely extinct. They've already supernova It's in the constellation Boots. What the hell is that? The constellation Boots. Boots? Boots. Boots? As in cowboy boots. Oh, okay. A light year is 5.8 trillion miles. 
Yeah, the distance that it takes the light to travel in one year. Wow. This beats the old record by about 30 million years. Which isn't much, but was difficult to achieve. Incredible, isn't it? Said astronomer Garth Illingworth of the University of California, Santa Cruz, co-author of the paper <coughs> in Astrophysical Journal Letters announcing the discovery. Now, now you know why you need a wormhole to, to take shortcuts in the universe. The photo they took was from a crucial time in the early universe, after what was called the Dark Ages, when galaxies and stars were just starting to form and the universe was only one, five, a hundredth the mass it is now. This galaxy, larger than most of the others from that time, which is why astronomers using the most powerful telescopes can see it now, was probably only about 100 million years old. But it was quite busy. We are looking here at an infant that's growing at a great rate. The galaxy was giving birth to stars at 80 times the rate our Milky Way does now. People have no idea, man. You took the, the planet Earth with all of its selfishness and greed and arrogance and high technology and you put it next to other heavenly bodies, uh, you know, planets, stars. It's just a speck of dust, not even, even less compared to other uh, bodies out there in space. What is man that thou art mindful of him? That's what David asked God in the Psalms. Yeah. What is man that thou art mindful of him? You must have some kind of plan that yeah. involves man. I mean, huh? if, the, if the earth is a speck of dust in the scheme of things, and a human being is a like a molecule. A worm. A worm is too big. I'm talking about compared to other planets well, and compared to g the universe, compared to galaxies, suns, and God himself. Well, I mean, we are very insignificantly tiny. Well, yes, and that is why uh, if you're a believer in God or the Bible, etc., you must ask yourself, why the universe? Yeah. Why? Because, what you know, is all this stuff for? Right. If it was made by a God from the Bible, then obviously it was made for a reason. Yes. Now, does any of your Christian sects, uh, like your Methodists and your whatevers, uh, do they know why? The Evangelicals. Universe? Yeah. Do they know why? <clears throat> do they tell us why? It's in the Bible. It's there. For people to understand no, why they they, they, they they mostly spend their time uh, listening. Yeah, they spend their time. The, the, the Earth is only 6,000 years old. Yeah, like this goofball uh, um, scientist or whatever is trying to prove that dinosaur bones are only thousands of years old and not millions. You know, he looks like he's got like a Abe Lincoln beard. He's a right-wing idiot. You know, but um, well, I don't know what he's going to use to to yeah. measure them because uh, carbon dating is not very good at small lengths of time, such like this six thousand years. Yeah, you know, what it I was works better on the larger. What I was saying um, is uh, that. Um, Well, continue, because I forgot what I was going to say. Yale astronomer Pascal Usch was looking through Hubble Space Telescope images in 2013 when he saw a bright object. He then used the Spitzer Space Telescope to see it again. The hardest work was confirming the age and the distance using the ground-based Keck 
observatory in Hawaii to separate the light waves. What I was going to say was uh, right-wing fundamentalist evangelicals are too busy making the pastor or the evangelist the focus of everything Ooh. rather than what's really in the Bible. Bingo! Ego, vanity of the pastor. In other words, the messenger rather than the message. Right, that's what I yeah, was trying okay. to get at. I can dig it. I can dig it because that's what they did with Jesus himself. Hey, you remember that? You see that banner of all these well-dressed politicians in front of the White House praying in public and holding hands, putting on a big show, showing off, and then the verse underneath? The verse in total, total contradiction to what they were doing. Yeah, was it Matthew? What was that? Matthew 5 something, 6, 5, about, 6. About do not, uh, if you pray, uh, do not pray in public like, a, do not be a hypocrite. Like the Pharisees. And pray in public showing off like the Pharisees you should be you should really come to God very humble and private not show off. humble and a broken heart right which is now what they do they show off that's correct we, and they they even God said they were hypocrites like the Pharisees and the Sadducees of old right. they like to have the best seats in the synagogue and the best clothes to wear outside when they walk down the street so you can rever reverence them. You can give them an no, obeisance. In other words, they're, ostent here. they're ostentatious oh, people. Yeah, they're yeah. very ostentatious. Is the word seduction... Me, me, me. Does the word seduction come from the, the seduckies? No. Seduction? Sedu or is it spelled differently? Spelled differently. Oh, okay, alright. It has two D's. Okay. Okay, it's a religion. It's a... They did not believe in the resurrection. Well, they, the didn't, they did not acknowledge that Jesus was the Messiah. Because, was because Jesus pretty much told them off and wrecked their little money-making scheme. <laughs> they were looking for someone to come and save them. From the Romans. That's correct. But not change the way they were. In other words, in, the, in their eyes, they were these self-righteous, powerful, wealthy, religious oh, figures. Oh, in their eyes, they were righteous, not self-righteous. Right. They were the righteous. Yeah. You know. The letter writer takes issue with the Big Bang Theory being taken as fact but makes clear her belief that the universe was created by God. Neither a Big Bang created universe nor a God created universe is fact. That's why because they, neither has been yet proved. That's, because, that's why it's called the Big Bang Theory. It's a theory. Religion is a theory. Conceivably, one or even both might eventually be proved true or neither. So a theory is like an unproven assumption. That's correct. Uh, uh, based on, on faith, which is based on hope. An unproven assumption. I am assuming that that's how the universe was created. Yes, it does seem beyond belief that the entire universe, everything that exists, could have originated from something the size of a pinhead. Which is about the size of a Republican's brain. And at least as incomprehensible is the notion that a god created the universe. When PBS's Charlie Rose once asked avowed atheist James Watson about this, Watson put it succinctly when he dryly asks, where is your evidence? Recall there was a time in human history when planet Earth was believed to be the center of our solar system. Indeed, the center of the universe! It took a Galileo and others to find the truth. 
even though Albert Einstein once said, man will never learn the truth, I believe particle accelerators like the Large Hedron Collider, infrared telescopes even more powerful than the Hubble, more advanced computers, minds like those of Watson and Stephen Hawking, and other resources yet to come eventually will reveal the truth. Truth some may not want to hear. Well, yeah, that, that's how truth is to a lot of people. But it will be the truth. For now, on all of this, I remain an agnostic. Oh, an agnostic has uh, as much merit as anyone else because everything is uh, you know everything is uh, that we just uh, that you just mentioned is, is unproven scientific theory is unproven religion is unproven now, however I do have a contention a bone of contention with these people who dismiss the God theory they totally dismiss it but they are dismissing it from a premise that they don't understand. Because they only hear it from the right wing. That's correct. They only hear that form of Christianity. They're not hearing the Bible. Which is a misinterpreted Bible. Right. And, li and blatant lies, too. Well, that too. It is a counterfeit Christianity. Well, they have to be blatant lies if after 2,000 years, some things had to be totally restored. Listen. That were not there anymore. I, I know. If, I know a few atheists that were, grew up as Catholics, with their relatives uh, yelling at them and and being like dictators that they this, this is what you must learn. You must know. Oh, you must believe with the Catholic Church and the Pope ah. and this and the Pope and the poop and uh, you know. And 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 then other people who who have grown up in families of popular organized religion. You know, whether whether it be Baptists or whatever, and where their their uh, parents pounded it into them, not realizing that it was all based on uh, Bible lies and misinterpretation. This is the negative um, environment, re the negative religious environment that many of these present day atheists were exposed to thus making them angry atheists because I sense a lot of anger when they communicate about religion. Well, if they expected to learn the truth about the Bible from the Catholic Church, that right. wasn't going to happen. Well, or, or the evangelicals that are uh, Republican career politicians. That's correct. Uh, uh, well, they're not really evangelicals. They're, they're just using God and the Bible is a front. That's correct. You know, like because they, they occupy the moral high ground. Well, uh, what about some of your popular TV evangelists? You know, your Joel Osteens and the Benny Hins and the, and so on and so forth. They're using religion. I mean, the Bible as a front. Well, that's nothing new. You know, Ken Create says, well, I'm not in a position to judge him. I says, Ken, you don't even have to judge him. You just, you just have to look at their actions. You they have, have to they, find the truth and warn. Joel Osteen supposedly collects $600,000 a week. Okay, Ooh. that shows you how many, how many morons and fools are out there in, in, in America. Tithing to him. Now, tithing. If he gets this money, and obviously he's living very extravagantly, lavishly, him and his wife. And you never hear him really talk about scripture, you know, reciting scripture. He never does that. Yeah. How much of that massive amount of money is he helping the poor with? Or helping the homeless or starving children anywhere? Going to bed hungry. Uh, the homeless vets. How much... If he wants to be a real Christian evangelist or pastor, he will do the Christian thing and take some of his fortune. Not some. 
two coats, like the Bible says. Well, two. Well, you know, I mean, his wife. You're being too easy. His on wife. These his wife people. may not want to downgrade in her wardrobe. I well, don't know. tough noogies. <laughs> people just don't understand what it means in the Bible when you're talking about the poor. You're gonna get, supposed to give them their two coats. Your two coats, which means you are supposed to uplift them. Probably even <laughs> above you. Well, you're supposed to help. Not uh, to eliminate poverty. If you're rich, you're well, supposed to you help. Well, when you give your two coats, you are absolutely li eliminating poverty for that person you gave the two coats to. Right. Okay. It's not a matter of. I poverty. mean, it could be. It could be anything. It could be a rich, uh, young MBA African American MBA star that all of a sudden you know he grew up in a poor neighborhood. He might have grown up in the ghetto. Now he's rich because of basketball. It's his duty to give back to the community where he grew up. Build a new boys club and girls club. Build a recreation center. But Build community centers. You give back to the poor from your neighborhood. Same thing with other rich people. Yes. But there is something even more important than that. Because that way you can only help a few. Well, how do you what go you got to do well, is change the system. Well, you can't. A, one rich person is not going to do that. Why not? That, one rich corporation called the Cokes do it. Oh, you're talking about the one percenters. One percent. I'm talking about people who have the power and influence. Not like, you know, not like, uh, well, okay, I'll give you an example. Stephen Colbert did something very nice recently. Yeah, for some, it's only for a few people. But that's Stephen Stephen Colbert. He's not. He doesn't have the the funding that the Koch brothers have. Correct. Or a Bill what Gates. You, what you want to do is make a system of economics that does away with the poor. So you won't have that problem. That's you correct. Won't be there. That's correct. Because there now, shouldn't be really. There should be no poor in America. There should not be any tr in tremendous imbalance, in inequality of, of, of income, where you have the very rich and the very poor, yep. and a middle class that's vanishing. Ah! The balance of the inequality, the balance of uh, prosperity is totally shut to hell. You know what I mean? You know, the you profit know. of the earth is for all. Yes. Well, how come only these oil companies get the, the profit? Because they pay well, off. Fine. They pay off the scumbag politicians. Well, there you go. So the system has to be changed. Right. You gotta get the money out of politics, which will get the politics out of politics. It is a refreshing to read the letter writer perceive that science has theories on how this beautiful ordered universe came to be and not some dogma. What is clear is that such a grand design requires a talented force or a designer behind it. As for the continuing devastating events of the physical planet, could they be a compelling voice from a gentle being seeking to obtain men and women's longings for the total salvation of body, soul, and spirit. Now, other than the nice thoughts in that letter, that letter's crap. It's absolute crap. What does it say about anything? No, really, it's very you know? general and... What is your take on it? Besides well, it's the same old, same old. I mean, it's, it's people who have an idea of what religion is, or their Christianity is, and they put it in there. There's no solution. A, 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 a gentle being seeking to obtain men and women's longings for total salvation a gentle of being? body and spirit. Person sounds in other like words, a, in other words, here's the here's the wrong thing that people don't get. It's like a freaking Pollyanna hippie from the '60s, a flower child. 
people don't get this. Gentle being, love, I love you. God love is me. not saving everyone now. Right, and, okay? the, and these evangelical born again people are under the impression that he's walking alongside you and he's going to hear your every whim. Well, you the know. point is. God has over these 2,000 years since Jesus, and before, of course, but selected only a few. Those who will be resurrected in, 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 in Corinthians 15, when he comes. You know, Not the raptured vast majority you know, of humans. Just think about it. Every human being that ever lived, including the world's population today, well, you compare that to 144,000 of the elect. 144,000 is a is a is a, a a grain of sand compared to every human being who ever lived, including the people alive today. A grain of sand. So these uh, born-again, holy roller evangelicals that feel they're going to be spared from the tribulation and get raptured up, but they do mention that, that verse about meeting Jesus in the twinkling of an eye, meeting him yeah, up in the air. Corinthians 15. What about it? No, it, it sounds... He doesn't specify. Yes, it does. Uh, Ken creates a, does, says it doesn't. You've got to look elsewhere. What did I say last Ken week? Ken creates says, read the sentence. It's plain, it's plain as day. It's, it's, what it's, did I say last week? It is here a little and there a little. It's so, not all in one place. Okay. So once. You know that is the 144,000 right. in another place. So one verse okay. is not all inclusive. No, yeah. that's why you need a concordance. Okay, and it will tell you every verse on the particular subject that you are interested in. But the point of Corinthians 15 and the one in Thessalonians is describing only those who have already qualified who will be raised in a twinkling of an eye. They're pre-chosen. They're already qualified. Not pre-chosen. Same thing! No, it isn't. Yes, it is. God did not pre-choose them. Well, he must know who's going to be part of the 144,000, doesn't he? 12,000 from each tribe. That's all he knows. But he doesn't know who? He doesn't know that if he comes today and he meets William J. Eisenman uh, at age uh, 71 and didn't meet him at age 22, that he is going to adhere to him at age 71. He doesn't know that. Well, something is going to take place that, that allows the, the, the proper 144,000 to be raptured. Something. It all has already taken place. They already had the Holy Spirit given to them, and their little uh, cassette tape has gone up. Okay? It's gone up. Well, it. if you, it, according up to there. according to a book of synonyms, <coughs> synonyms, excuse me, <coughs> pre-selection, predetermination is the same as what you just said. John the Baptist was pre-selected in the womb. None of your prophets of, of the uh, early oh, prophets I get it now. were pre-selected in the womb. I get it. In other words. These That's were, predestination. These are chosen after they have lived out their life and then during they were chosen. Lives. Or during. David. David was chosen young. And he was a scoundrel at times. Because he did some bad things. You know, and he's still chosen. That's correct. Yeah. In fact, David is a man after God's own heart. Because he repented of his evils when he found out that they were evil. That's what God likes. But and that was before Jesus too. Yeah. That he repented and was forgiven. Yeah. But he was a special case that did that. That was repented. No, there were several. There were among many others. What about Abraham? What about the? 
the, all the uh, die. We're missing. You're getting off the point. The point oh, is, God. there is no rapture of the vast majority of humans at the time Jesus comes. Jesus is raising up princes to rule with him at Jerusalem. One hundred and forty-four thousand. Bingo. That's it. Right. That's every, your rapture. And you want to call that a rapture? That's your rapture. And everybody else will have to deal with the tribulation. That's correct. And and be and judged and and or saved. And dead. And possibly resurrected if they get killed. Killed. Did, killed. They may not be resurrected for uh, over a thousand years. Well, the great white from the great the white from judge judgment. Yeah. Or the ancient Israel judgment. They are raised up too into humans. To given a uh, hundred years to live their lives according to God's way. Without the devil interfering. So what you're trying to say I'm only saying one thing is people that are not part of the 144,000 elect will be resurrected and and they will be given a hundred years to shape up or ship out everybody those who have uh, earned that so to speak everybody eventually there are three resurrections the one with the 144,000, which are the rulers. The rulers, not the vast majority of humans. That's what you must understand. I mean, personally, I wouldn't give Mitch McConnell a damn break at all. In the, in the well, chapter. he will be given a break. And so will Hitler. He's a piece of shit. So will Hitler. God wants all to not have to perish. So, the Mitch McConnells, the Paul Ryans, even even the Koch brothers, uh, all of them are going to be given a chance, according to your your take on uh, not my take. Uh, That's what the Bible Bible uh, prophecy. That's what okay. it says. All right. Well, I say your take because there are other people that were going to buck heads. No, no, no. Because well, big deal. They have to read it, don't they? Yes. They're, they're not going to buck heads with me because I ain't going to buck heads with them. Right. Because I just say, I just uh, slide it off my back, my duck's back, and say, hey, go read it. Here it is. There's you can't a... understand it? Ooh. Well, see, that's the value of a, 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 a pastor, an evangelist, a minister, whatever you want to call them. There's the value in, in telling people where to go to read it for themselves. What if he's... What if he's not the guy that he's supposed to be? You mean a pastor? Yeah. Or he could be a complete buffoon That's or a liar. Correct. That's my point. So where are you going to learn if he doesn't know? Well, if, they're, if you're lazy, you're just going to listen to him. And you're there not you going go. to read it for yourself. There you I go. tell people, yo, your pastor is, is really great, huh? Does he tell you where to look? Does he tell you where to find the, the verses? Or does he make stuff up on the top of his head and get all funky and, you know, start doing the moonwalk in church? And, you know, it's not about him razzle dazzling you. It's Mark, about you learning something when you leave. Mark 7, verse 7 through 9. You're there to learn. Yeah. They make all of my information of no effect through their traditions. That's what know. Jesus said. Some of the traditions are totally wacky, like That's the taking right. up of serpents with the rattlesnakes. You know, the guy's the idiot down south, uh, the Baptist is dancing in the, up and down the aisle with rattlesnakes in his hand. His wife gets bit and dies. Guess what? He, he continues to do sermons with rattlesnakes. See, but he believes, and that is, uh, <coughs> that is applicable to the... Uh, Cult. The... That is applicable to the rapture theory thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because they, those rattlesnake handlers, believe that they are the righteous. Therefore, it is given to them, like Jesus said, 
All you have to do is have the faith and you can move a mountain. You can handle the serpent. But you know what? They don't have the faith. So when they get, when those fangs sink their teeth into them, Bingo! They get envenomated. Envenomated. See, because they have this, they have this way of applying certain things in the Bible to all humanity. And it ain't that way. Because God, let me put it in street talk. He don't give a shit about the vast majority of humanity well, right that, now. Isn't that kind of harsh? No, it's the truth. Oh, okay. If that's all they understand, the way they can understand it, I'm making it clear to them. Because that's how it is. Yeah, if you want to omit all the these, dies, and thou's, and, and hast, and all this stuff. Yeah, they don't get it. Right, he really... It's not your time yet. Bingo! Is what you're trying to say. It's not your time. Big letters, the neon, yet. Yes. We're not saying it's not going to be forget. your time ever. Don't forget, the wages of uh. sin is death. Right. It is for all to die once. Well, that's the, the hell is supposed to be the grave and no eternal life after death. The grave. Well, right. Of course, you're it's, not going to get eternal life. You're going to get judged. But instead of a Dante's, <clears throat> instead of a Dante's inferno that the evangelicals feel exists, you're you're saying what um, other people I've heard say, like uh, 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 the Armstrongs, Brother Nathaniel, David C. Pack, that hell as a Dante's Inferno doesn't exist. It's, it, hell is the grave. Correct. That's one of the two... <clears throat> that's one of the two restored points. The one is that nobody goes to heaven when they croak, and nobody goes to hell when they croak, because the traditional concept of heaven does not exist in the Bible, nor the traditional concept of hell. They don't exist in the Bible. They are made up by man. What about the part of the Bible that says uh, the flames, you know, about torment and the flames uh, will not totally consume you, something like that. Uh, there are certain parts that, that describe an eternal torment. Only for the devil. That wasn't, that wasn't uh, uh, applied to the general population. Well, I don't know what you're speaking of. Number yeah. one. Yeah. Well, there. It's, so you know, there's a lot in the there's a lot in that book. I mean, it's but there. I'm saying, the the only one who will be tormented for eternity is the devil because he has eternal life. You don't. I right. don't. And neither does anybody right. until the first resurrection. The only person that got his eternal life back again was Jesus. Okay? That's the only one. The only person who ever came up to heaven was he who came down from heaven. Right. The writer was absolutely right regarding the Hubble Space Telescope. Those who disagree know neither God nor science. Mm -hmm. Science is only showing the nature of God. British scientist Peter Higgs and his Belgian colleague Francois Engelert Delabriosky have shown by experimental physics how matter was formed after the Big Bang. Higgs Boson particles God particles are neither matter nor energy, yet its origin of both. It's like saying everything is nothing and nothing is everything. The problem with religion is that it sees creator and creation as separate. Creator and creation cannot maintain a distance. If so, creator 
cannot be omnipresent or omnipotent. The entire universe is the manifest form of the unmanifest God, the Word. He uses small letter for the Word. So you know where he's going, don't you? He has not interpreted John 1, verse 1 through 14 correctly, has he? Well, give, so what are we going to learn from Give this guy? people the gist of what you just said. Uh, give them a summary. Of In John 1, verses 1 through 14, the word, word, is capitalized. It is speaking of another God. Okay. Two God. I follow Who you. have existed from all eternity. And, but and this the, gentleman is not using the word right. properly. <clears throat> and the and the God known as the Word was the creator of the universe and man, mankind. And he is the one who gave up his divinity to become a stinking, shitting, pissing human being. Right, dressed in rags. Well, he wasn't dressed in rags. They were not poor. Oh, that's right. It's Joseph was a carpenter. Yeah, Joseph, the only reason they were in the manger... He's a middle class man. In those, the only in those reason days. they were in the manger is because they were summoned to Bethlehem, Joseph's city of origin, to pay a tax. They just had... And there was no room at the inn. So Mary went into labor and, and they just happened to be there. Correct. Okay, I got you. When the three wise men arrived, they were no longer in the manger. So that, that nativity scene during uh, traditional pagan Christmas of the three, three wise men that were standing and they were all looking at baby Jesus in the hay, that's not accurate. No, because they... Then they come up and they say, well, Jesus was poor. No, he wasn't poor. He was of a well-to-do family. Uh, there was a time when Jesus, because he was the elder brother, they were having a wedding ceremony in Cana, I believe it was. And they ran out of wine. And in those days, you gave your people who come to your shindigs the best wine early in the night early in the evening and then you give them the crap wine later when they're you know boozed up well anyway mary came to jesus he said she says we we ran out of wine and he got a little perturbed and he said why are you bothering me with this you know something like that but he was the elder son and he had to provide so he turned the water into wine and he started drinking the wine and the guys man you know you usually put the the best stuff out in the inn you got the best stuff here in in the late evening here man this is great but see he had a he had to do a miracle then yeah mary no no they knew when he was young who he was and that he was yeah. capable of these things. He really got perturbed though, huh? Well, I wouldn't say perturbed, but he was probably yeah. busy doing something else. Right. And maybe he was praying or whatever. I don't know. And he didn't talk like, like Reverend Bill did. He didn't go, hey, you like how you bother me now for... Well, yeah, I put it in street lingo, hey, man. Hey, you know something? Come to think of it, I didn't know that Mary Magdalene existed until, like, throughout my whole childhood and teenage years. I didn't even know about the woman because she was never mentioned it, oh, like man. she was a part of the cl of the click the 120 the click I mean I mean she used to hang out with the disciples didn't she yes she they never ever ever mentioned <laughs> her in 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 the so-called Catholic Sunday school classes the, or the catechism the, no they never mentioned her they never mentioned her there were all all dudes. It was a sausage party of dudes, the disciples, 
and all of them according to the Catholic Church were celibate which was, that was not true. ridiculous because yeah, they were quite productive there's in no those celibacy days. in the Bible Paul says hey you want a man go ahead I don't care it's it, better to marry than to burn it's for you if it in other words if you're celibate it's your choice. If it's for you, fine. Well, if it's as for not him, for you, he had he had God's work to do, so he couldn't be married. So this, that's what he said. So this celibacy with the priesthood is it came a, with a stupid pope. It, it came about with with a pope. Yeah. Now, what about the uh, the religious aspect of marriage? When did that occur? In Genesis. Oh, so that's old. When Ad, when you know Eve was introduced to Adam. She was, they became one flesh. Okay, I follow you now. That's but as far as the whole celibacy thing with Catholicism, it's a bunch of nonsense. Garbage. It's garbage. It started with uh, one of the popes. One of the popes. Okay, follow. Gotcha. Man's logic cannot explain God. He must transcend the mind to experience the nature of God. See, this guy, or, yeah, it's a guy. You, you know what he's doing is he is reducing God to some natural phenomena thingy instead of a person, a deity, a ruler of the universe. Moses heard God say, I am who I am. Unless man transcends his mind, he would not understand the word or I am. Also, I am was used in the Bible in capitalization because it is a, it is a proper noun. I am. That was the that was Yahweh's name. I am. Well, one of the names, right? One of the names. The other ones were, were uh, uh, Yahweh Melchizedek. Melchizedek, Yahweh. Uh, <clears throat> Perhaps. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 finish it off. Perhaps the true scientists of the present and the prophets of the ancient world who transcended their minds are the same people living in different paradigms. Everything evolved from the same source. And everything going back to the same source. That's the truth of thermal, <coughs> excuse me, thermodynamic energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Let's embrace science to know the truth. The end. The end. You know, just to give you an idea how many imbeciles are out there who claim to be Christian, this, this one woman Posts a question on Facebook saying, Was the fruit in the Garden of Eden an, an apple? Yes or no? Who the hell cares what it was? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it was a pomegranate or a, uh, uh, an Symbolism. apple or a, uh, a mango or a, um, um, what's that fruit my grandmother used to bring? A persimmon? Actually, I like them. Dragon fruit. From they're Vietnam. Ex they're expensive. They're very jelly-like. Je jelly well, regardless, a yeah. fig. Symbolism, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this whole friggin' thread of conversation was about what kind of fruit it was. Well, you see, that's that's what stupid, this guy... Stupid, stupid, stupid people. Just did. It. It's an avenue for you to argue over and avoid the point. Big distraction. Exactly. That's what it amounts to. Who the fuck cares if it was a fruit? Just like when uh, Governor Jim McGreevy was a uh, Democrat governor of New Jersey, it turned out he was gay. <gasps> Who cares if he was gay? He was a good governor. He did a great job. He did a great job. The same thing goes for what Obama does in his private life with his wife and kids and 
and and all the all the unimportant things about Obama. Look at his performance, as which made him one of the greatest presidents, performance-wise. Just imagine what in, could have been done in the history of the United States without all the obstruction. There you go. Could you, know. you imagine yeah. what he could have accomplished without the obstruction coming from the demons of the of the Republican Party? It's amazing. The <clears throat> vitamin shop. The company? Vitamin shop. Okay, they're they're nationwide now. Has pulled from its shelves dietary supplements found to have a speed like substance. Oh, like a Fedrine or something like that? The National Vitamin Store chain took the action after a new study found that the supplements labeled as containing a shrub called Acacia Rigadula. Okay, the botanical name, right? Latin. Actually contained a compound called BMPEA, uh, comma, ABC News reported. Well, did it, did it increase the heart rate of people? BMPEA is a stimulant. Probably increased the heart rate and people overdid, over, uh, to overdose on it. Created in the 1930s as a replacement for amphetamines. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, Red Bull is not good for you. I know somebody who ended up in a hospital, a young guy, from drinking too much Red Bull is not a regulated drug and has not been studied in humans. The study published in the journal Drug Testing and Analysis found that 11 of 21 dietary supplement brands labeled as containing acai rigadula actually contain BMPEA. The supplements claim to help with weight loss, cognitive function, and athletic performance. Well, stimulating your heart rate. Well, that's to increase the metabolism. It's that's what all of these amphetamine weight drug, drug drugs supposedly do. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, it's not the safest way to lose body Of fat. course not. It's, you it's know, not. some temporary magic thing. It's Yeah, it's not a permanent answer to uh, being overweight at all. If these findings are confirmed by the FDA, these products should not be sold as <laughs> dietary supplements. Vitamin Shop said in a news release. Well, vitamin shop said, but if they weren't ordered, if they weren't forced to remove it, they would have kept on selling it, right? Wouldn't have said anything. Or did somebody sue them, perhaps? I have no idea. Well, the safe way for you people out there that are um, not the educated consumers, the safe way for permanent weight loss is to cut out all refined carbohydrates out of your diet, which includes white flour and white sugar. Uh, increase the good fats so you stabilize your blood sugar and you feel full longer. Not to mention all the health benefits of fats, because fats are an important nutrient. Um, and not do it, not doing it by forcing your heart to beat faster and you know increase respiration and the uh, heart rate. And, that's a dangerous way to go about it. And to consume thermogenic foods, like anything producing heat. Ginger, cinnamon, mm. garlic, clove. Cayenne. Yeah, anything that produces heat is considered a thermogenic food. Um, that's the best way to rev up if you want to rev up your metabolism. If you like Indian food, curry is a perfect example of thermogenics. Thermogenic, but you got to cut the the carbs down very low. Got to get them down. You got you got you no sugar. You gotta find a good substitute. Try stevia. Try stevia. Try uh, 
uh, monk fruit. Xylitol. Which is low Han Kuo uh, uh, xylitol. Anyway, that's it. I got one Hung Lo. One Hung Lo, not two Hung Lo? No, the left one, Hung Lo, oh. one Hung Lo. Yeah, monk fruit, it's, a chi it's like stevia, it's like the Asian stevia, you know? So anyway, um, that wraps it up for this week's uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting uh, Truth. Hope you learned something. Hope you learned something, because it was very educational. And for all you jabronis that criticize this show and our productions for unimportant, trivial, shallow reasons and not look at the content don't watch the show. I'm not going to fight with you. I'm not going to call you names. You're not worth it. Just exactly. don't watch it. Don't watch the show. I mean, you know, I mean, you knowing me, you probably think I'm going to get all riled up. I'm going to blow a gasket and yell at you and call you names. I could do that. But it's, it's not an important way for me to expend my energy and, you know, and direct it in a constructive manner. So I'm just going to simply tell you, don't watch it. What can I say? You know what the Bible says. What's that? Basically. What? Well, it says that, you know, like when Jesus was here, he used parables. He spoke to the multitudes in parables. Right. They would not uh, understand what he was saying. Right. Now, most of your traditional Christians just go, oh, hey, he spoke in parables because the people were uneducated and therefore uh, he would make it clear to them what he was trying. No, he was just the opposite. Well, anyway, in there's one scripture where it says that basically uh, there, there may come a time at a certain time and whatever when dealing with certain people where you keep your goddamn mouth shut. Don't warn them. Don't help them because then you may turn them around and they might, you know, uh, 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 repent and be saved. You know what I mean? Well, people... And it's not for them to be that. People will, if they really, really want your advice and help, they'll let you know in some way. Well, you know, sure. Don't freely help people because they might not be open no, to change. No, no, no. You have to, you know. they have to invite you in. Like... I mean, give you an example about and how. Oh, how it's the house. Right. Well, but to give you. Well, Jesus only uh, reached 120 individuals. But to give you an example. Well, he reached thousands. But well, small Like flock. I said, they weren't supposed to understand, and they didn't. Right. I mean, not counting Paul. Paul's job is 120. Paul was to, to, to the Gentiles. Right. But what I'm saying is that to give you an example about a logic that may have may have had a purpose look at the the great libraries of Alexandria no. Egypt that were destroyed by the Catholic Church I hear by the Pope at that time now now according to um, uh, a prophecy if that library was left alone with all the vast knowledge and science in there it might have propelled us technologically much higher than than we have today or much faster into the tribulation so you think you think there, know, was, there was a reason why that library was destroyed right yeah well it's like this when uh, when they were building the tower of babel right nimrod and his folky they god had to put a stop to it otherwise men they spoke one language at that time and men working together creativity of their brains yeah so god had to confound their languages to yeah. slow them down in other words it would have propelled mankind too rapidly into to the, the trip the tribu to the tribulations tribulation yeah was what in other words what you're saying is the higher the technology the higher the knowledge the more detrimental it is to man Yes, because man is working without the Spirit of God. So the smarter he becomes, the more smart ass he becomes. Because it's all used. And he, he cuts God out of his life. Exactly. It's all used to the negative rather than the positive. 
You can see it in what we talk about it, every week. It's like about you, the about right. the oligarchs and the poor. Like what you told me, if Franklin Delano Roosevelt didn't have polio, he might not have Correct. become the the progressive, liberal, compassionate politician that everybody knew and loved of him right after because he yeah. came from kind of a, a highfalutin hoity-toity was a rich man right right so so he was in fact he was humbled humbled by yes. the polio and the post polio he had post polio right no we just, didn't know about it at that, those days we didn't know okay he was humbled by it therefore he might not have been a compassionate, caring liberal. Correct. There might not be the things that, that he created Correct. that were positive. And guess who wants to get rid of all that stuff? Well, we all know. Our so, humble Republican friends, Satan, colleagues, Satan's, colleagues, Satan's tools. Oh yeah, our colleagues. Before I say goodbye, <clears throat> listen, uh, Elizabeth Warren and perhaps Bernie Sanders, they're not colleagues, they're demons. Call them what they really are. Colleagues is is too trivial. It's too nice. It's too it's nice. It's an equalizing term. It's like saying that we're both equals. No, we're not. You're no. There's no way that a corrupt, greedy, narrow-minded, lunatic Republican is equal to Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders. No way, no how. Correct. All right. Say goodbye to his jabronis. Bye, jabronis. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.